Hello again, boys and girls. Welcome back to Adventures in Brazil. Last time we saw that Roger and his family had a fun adventure, and they saw 15 boys and girls get saved. And Roger is continuing to learn the importance of going to school every day. Chapter 7. Vacation days were drawing to a close. School would soon begin. This made Roger feel bad. Then he remembered and reminded himself that summer camp time was coming up. He loved camp and he was very happy when the day finally arrived. I'm glad you and mother have charge at camp, dad, he said. Otherwise, we would not be allowed to go to the teenager's camp. The camp was nestled in the hills with the little jeep, loaded as it was with family and equipment, chugged right along as though it was too happy to be going to summer church camp. They had no sooner arrived when a Brazilian fellow ran out of a dormitory to greet them. Hi, Roger yelled. Hi, Marcus. You didn't do the marketing without me, did you? Of course not. How could I do the marketing without the list from your father? Marcus rumpled Roger's hair just a little more. Roger's father shook hands with Marcus and handed him a piece of paper. Here it is, Marcus, he said. You think you can get all this stuff first thing in the morning? Marcus grinned. Sure, sure, he said. Then turning to Roger, he said, And you, young man, see that you are ready early, and I mean early, if you want to go with me. Otherwise, zip, I'm off without you. Oh, Marcus, I know you wouldn't do that. Roger was glad to see Marcus. They had always had lots of fun together. It seemed that Roger had just gone to sleep when he heard a sound outside the window. In an instant, Roger was out of bed, wide awake, and hissing back. He knew this was Marcus, ready to go to the market. In a moment or two more, Roger was racing down the path to the jeep where Marcus waited. He buttoned his shirt as he ran. Is this really morning, he asked. Marcus drove the jeep as fast as it would go. The road was bumpy, the jeep was noisy, but it did not keep Roger from talking. Yelling above the noise, he said, How far is it to the street market? Before Marcus could answer, he asked another question. How did you make out at the university this year, Marcus? Did you pass? Did you get good grades? Don't you hate going to school, Marcus? Marcus grinned. Things surely would not be dull at camp with this young fireball around, he decided. Now, one time, one question at a time, young fellow, he said. First question, I made out fine last year. Second question, yes, I passed. Third question, yes, I got good grades. Last question, no, I don't hate school. I like school. I want to be the best workman that I can for my master. Don't you think he deserves the best, Roger? Roger was thoughtful and for once quiet. He had no answer to that question. And then as they sped along, they could see Sao Paulo spread out on the mountainside before them. How beautiful it looked with the light shining out in the darkness. Whoa, Marcus yelled. He pretended to be driving a horse as he stopped the jeep. Here we are, my young friend. This is the market. I'll just tie my horse here while we hunt for the best we can find. Carts were lined up on both sides of the street for several blocks. Marcus studied the list again. Tomatoes, shushu, which is a type of squash, onions and garlic sweet potatoes. Hurrying from cart to cart, Marcus tried to select the best of everything, spending as little money as possible. Look, Roger, here comes the meat. Marcus laughed and pointed to a man walking toward them with his head inside a hog. Wonder how he can see where he is going, Roger wanted to know. He ran around the man until he saw just where the man could look out. After they bought some meat, fish, cheese, beans, and rice, they loaded everything, in, everything inside the jeep and locked it. Something more? Roger asked. Yep, was all that Marcus answered as he made his way to a cart Roger had not noticed before. This was where sweets were sold. Marcus bought some candy called Maiden's Kisses and some called Mother-in-Law's Eye. Roger laughed at the funny names. I noticed you bought more of the maiden's kisses than you bought of the mother-in-law's eye, Marcus, he teased. Marcus gave him a little punch. Just for that, I may not give you any, he said, all the while letting Roger help himself. 
Now just one more thing and we'll be back off to camp. The one more thing was live chickens, 25 of them. The man put them in burlap bags. The chickens squawked all the way home. Roger was worried about them. When they arrived at camp, the first thing Marcus did was to let the chickens out of the burlap bags to run free in a little chicken yard he had made for them. They seem none the worse for the adventure, he said. How about you, young man? Me? Oh, I'm fine. And I'm glad to see that the poor chickens are as well. But look, Marcus, the flag is being raised. It must be 8 o'clock in time for quiet time. I must say it looks more like noon, or perhaps I should say it feels more like noon. I am about starved. The young university student and Roger found places close by where they could see the Brazilian flag waving in the breeze. breeze and Roger's sister Karen already reading her Bible. Roger opened his Bible, but he was not really reading. He was thinking seriously about what Marcus had said about giving God the very best as his workman. He bowed his head and prayed, Dear God, you know I do want to serve you, but couldn't it be doing something which doesn't need so much school? The bugle sounded. That meant breakfast. It sounded good to Roger. He took a shortcut to the dining hall, walking beside the swimming pool. He was not thinking about the cockroach that crunched when he grounded under his feet, nor was he thinking about the good-smelling breakfast. I wish I wouldn't have to go to school. That's what he was thinking as he hurried to the dining hall. Chapter 8 The day at camp had been a busy, fun-filled, happy one for Roger. The older boys had been good to him, letting him enter into the games. And as Marcus had told them, you'll find out that Roger is good. Don't be surprised if he beats you lots of times. And he had, too. Up the hill, playing ping pong. Down the hill to play basketball and football. Over near the one file to ride the horses. And down at the pool for a swim. This had made Roger wish it might never come to an end. But now it was early evening and time for services. There was much whispering about the man who was to be the speaker for that evening. A Brazilian with an interesting story to tell, they said. As the young people walked up the trail, they sang happily and seriously. Marcus seemed to be starting the hymns. Over and over again, he started the same one. I have a song I love to sing, since I have been redeemed. They soon found out why Marcus had done this. As they filed into the meeting place, a dark-eyed man stood to greet them, all the while singing with them. Since I had been redeemed, he was smiling as he sang. The very first thing the, Bra the Brazilian said as he rose to speak was, Do you know how important it is for every Christian to sing? The speaker continued, It is important because many had come to know the Savior through the singing of a gospel song. I was one such person. Tonight I want to tell you my story. Want to hear it? A murmur of yes through the more than 200 young people sitting before him. Well, the speaker began, I was studying to be a pastor. I was studying in a big city. One day, as I was walking outside along the corridor, memorizing something I was supposed to learn, I heard a lovely young voice outside singing. I stopped to listen, for I have always loved music. Then, suddenly, as I listened to the words, I became very angry. The singer was singing the song you sang as you marched in here tonight. The speaker began to sing in a fine, deep voice. I have a song I love to sing, since I have been redeemed. Of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Motioning for the young people to join in, he sang, I have a home prepared for me since I have been redeemed, where I shall dwell eternally, since I have been redeemed. You may wonder what it was about the song which made me so angry. I thought it was wicked to say, even in a song, that one would surely have a home in heaven. That one was certain of having, that one was certain of having been redeemed. I understood the words and their meanings, and I was furious especially since the voice was surely one which belonged to a very young person. 
but I went about my studying and soon forgot about the song and the singer. The very next day I heard the singer again and the same song. The next day I heard it again and the next. Finally, I found myself repeating the words to myself when I should have been studying. I decided it was time for me to put a stop to this nonsense. The very next day, when the singing began again, I climbed to the top of the wall which surrounded the school where I was studying, and looking over the wall, saw that the singer was a very young girl. I shook my fist at her and said, How dare you sing such a wicked song! I shall never forget the lovely blue eyes which looked up at me, surprised and frightened. How can it be wicked to sing about the Lord Jesus? She asked, tears in her eyes. Of course it isn't wicked to sing about Jesus, but to say you know you will go to heaven? This is very, very wicked. The child was really crying now. What song has my child been singing which is so wicked? In my anger, I hadn't noticed the child's mother standing a little distance away, listening to what I was saying. Is it you who teaches her such wickedness, I demanded? There was great sadness in the woman's eyes as she said, But it is true. You study the Bible. Surely you must know that it teaches this. God has promised that we shall live with him eternally if we have been redeemed by the precious blood of his Son, Jesus Christ. I climbed down the wall without another word. I could not waste precious time on an ignorant woman and her child. Of course, as you know, it was I who was ignorant. The woman had said God's word taught such things. I knew of no such teaching, so I searched. Yes, I searched scripture, and thank God I found this was true. I knew, of course, that I was a sinner. Had I not often confessed my sins? But to know I was truly forgiven because the Lord Jesus died for me? Of this I was ignorant. Then I learned that if I believed in God's Son, the Lord Jesus, and received him as my sin bearer, as 1 Peter 2.24 says, he would not only forgive my sin and cleanse my heart, but he had promised to make me a member of the family of God. John 1.12 tells us this. I found also that the Lord Jesus had said, Where I am, there ye may be also. John 14, 3. I knew he would not, could not lie. And so, teenagers, this is my story. Tonight, I too sing with you and with the little girl whom God used to open my eyes since I have been redeemed. Sing it again, please. And they did, and how they did sing. Roger tried to sing with them, but he was trying to hide the tears which would come into his eyes. He put his head down and tried to wipe the tears away with the back of his hand. Then he looked over and saw Marcus. He wasn't trying to hide his tears. Neither, Roger saw, was his own father. So he just sang along and forgot the tears. But he would never forget the story the man had told. Perhaps he thought it doesn't take too much schooling to be an evangelist singer. And then he remembered Lucas. Lucas had said he needed to go to school to be a good singer for the Lord, one whom the Lord used to win souls by his music. Now Roger is experiencing the adventure of summer church camp. The Lord is working on his heart through the messages. Join us next time for more adventures in Brazil.